Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can measure anything within your application, whether that is performance or domain related, for example, how long a request takes to complete, or how many times someone bought an item, or how long they took to buy that item. And having such measures or meters in your applications is vital for any type of application. So in this video, we're going to see how we can do it using the latest tools added in .NET 8, simplifying it completely, and also show you how you can visualize it with something like .NET Aspire. Now, you don't have to use .NET Aspire for any of that. It just makes me showing you this way, way easier. This can be used with any type of visualization technology. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have the .NET Aspire Showcase project. And if you don't know what this is, I do have a video on .NET Aspire. You don't have to watch it to understand everything. Thing. I will be explaining things, but I'm going to put a link in the description down below if you want to check what .NET Aspire is, because in many ways, it is the future of .NET for some developers. Now, I'm going to quickly run the app host of this Aspire project to show you what we have here. And this is your typical weather API and Blazor combo with a Redis cache. So when you run Aspire, you get this dashboard when you run it locally. And I can go here, and this is the page I'm referring to, where we have this weather visualization for five weathers. And this is happening by the Blazor application calling the weather API. These weathers are fake and they have some sort of delay to fake a request happening to an API service. Now, if I go over here, I can see things like console logs for each application and structure logs as well. I can see traces and I can see how long things took, but I can also see metrics. So if I select a resource, I can visualize the weather API metrics and I can see things like assembly count, allocation size, and a bunch of other things. Now, these are built in inside .NET, but we can actually add our own. And these are great because you know, if you want to know how many active requests you have or how many open connections you have, how much is the request duration on average or percentiles, you can do all that here, as you can see. But how do we add our own? Well, let me show you. The first thing we need to do is go to the project we want to add that functionality in. In this case, it is the weather API, not the web project, even though it can be added there as well if we want to. And I want to add my metrics functionality here. So I'm going to say builder.services.add metrics here we go we can just leave it as it is for now now what i encapsulate the logic of collecting metrics into a single class because i'm going to be adding a couple of functionalities both a counter and also a histogram where we're going to see how long a request takes over a period of time so what i'm going to say is i'm going to say whether metrics or you can say whether api metrics or whatever you want now i'm going to publicly expose a constant string in here i'm going to call that metrics name. So these metrics will have a name. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the assembly name. So whether API will be the name of those metrics, then all I need to do is define the things I want to track. What do I want to track here? Well, I want to track how many times people get the weather. And I also want to track the request duration in the form of a histogram. Now you have a few ways to actually measure those metrics. And I'm going to show you quickly how we can do that by creating a constructor and injecting the I meter factory, which is sort of the root of everything meter related now in .NET. So the moment you say meter factory, you can say dot create and you can create a meter. Now we're just going to pass the name of the meter and the meter of the name will be the metrics name, which I actually uh, misnamed. It should be meter name, not metrics name. So we have that now and this returns the meter. And now through the meter, we can get things like tags, name, scope, and so on. But we can also create a bunch of meter related concepts. So counter, so you can increment, you can count things. In this case, we're going to count how many requests we want to measure. So every time we're going to get a request, we're going to say counter dot add one, two, three, however you want. Then you can have an up down counter. So basically like the counter, but in this case, it can also go down while the counter just goes up. Then we're going to have a histogram. And then we also have observable versions of all of these things, including a gauge which sort of shows where you are. Imagine the gauge as, I don't know, like the RPM on your car type of situation. Now, the meters we're going to create are two in this case. First, we're going to create a counter. So that is going to be a private read only counter of type long. And I'm going to call that weather request counter. So we're going to count the weather request. And we're just going to say that. And then we're going to give it a name. Now, for the name, you can say weather app dot API. So sort of this meter name in lowercase and then dot weather 
requests. And in this case, it's a counter. So we're going to say count. That is the name of the metric we're going to have. And then you can also specify uh, the unit. In this case, we're not going to attach. So we're going to just leave it as it is in the case of a counter. But then we're also going to have a histogram. So we're going to say histogram and that's duration. So it's going to be a double. And I'm going to say whether request duration over here. And that's going to have similar logic. So we're going to say again, meter dot create histogram. And that's going to be a double. The name will be same as before. So whether API dot weather requests, but in this case, it's going to be duration. And we will specify uh, the type over here, which is the unit we want to use to measure. So in this case, we're going to say milliseconds because that's what we're going to track. Now I'm going to leave the histogram on the side to begin with, and I'm going to start just with the counter. So what I'm going to say is public void increase weather request count. And internally, I'm going to say weather request counter dot add and I'm just going to say add one to the counter and that's it. And then I'm going to go to program.cs, say builder.services.add singleton. And I'm going to add the weather metrics as a singleton, which means I can go then and inject it wherever I want to use it. In this case, it is the endpoint. So I'm going to say weather metrics. In this example, I don't care if the request succeeded or failed. So I'm going to count with a try finally, which means the finally block will be invoked no matter what. And I'm going to put the try here and then I'm going to say increase weather count. And that is it. Now, in order for those metrics to actually be exposed, I need to add them into a list. Now, in this case, I am using .NET Aspire and .NET Aspire has its own set of defaults, as you can see in this service default project, which is invoked through the add service defaults method, which will be called in the program.cs at the very top. So it has a list of things we're going to track. And those are the things you saw in that dashboard. So I can go here and say weather app dot API because that is my meter name. And the moment I do that and I say, go ahead and run the project through Aspire, then I can go here to my running application. If I go to metrics and weather API, you're only going to see some of the built-in ones that happen when the application starts. The moment I go to resources, I go to the project and I'm going to go back to metrics and then I go to weather and I call it a few times you're going to see these new ones appear. In this case, at the very, very bottom, I have the request count and you can see the request count be nine and the more requests I call. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I go back, you're going to see in real time the value all the way to 15. And as you can see, it is showing you over time how the requests are increasing. It's very, very nice. And depending on whatever visualization framework you're using, you can get something like this. In this case, behind the scenes, this is using OpenTelemetry. And we can see that over here, if I go to extensions and scroll all the way up, the call that's happening is services.add OpenTelemetry with metrics. And then we add the built-in meters over here. So if you need to do that from your own application, you can do this by saying with meters and then passing your own meters in here using the add meter method. But now how do you measure the duration to use a histogram? Because with a histogram, you have something happening in the beginning to measure when the request started and then eventually you complete it and you push that data. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our second clean architecture course on Dome Train called Deep Dive Clean Architecture in .NET. And it's again expertly delivered by Microsoft engineer Amikai Mandinman, who also has a YouTube channel and he's also running clean architecture training for Microsoft employees within Microsoft. This is a unique opportunity to learn how to build applications using clean architecture by someone who writes code for technologies like Teams, PowerPoint and Word, and his code is used by millions of users every month. Not only did we launch this course, which is a follow up to the getting started we already have, but now both courses are bundled into a From Zero to Hero Clean Architecture in .NET bundle, which also has a permanent 20% discount. So if you want to buy both, that's the best value you're going to find. Now, to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount on this brand new course. So check the link in the description and use code CLEAN20 at checkout. This is by far the best Clean Architecture course you're going to find find out there everything updated to latest.net with latest practices by someone who's actually practicing what he's teaching in one of the biggest companies in the world. So don't miss this opportunity. Now back to the video. Okay, so let me show you a technique on how to do that. We're going to use the built-in dispose mechanism of C Sharp to achieve this. The way we're going to do this is create a new class, public class, weather, tracked, request, duration, and that is going to implement the I disposable interface. So we're going to do one of these. 
then I'm going to add the one missing member I need, which is the dispose method. And I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to say private read only long request start time or timestamp. And I'm going to use stopwatch.get timestamp, but you can also use the either inject the time provider or use the system time provider to do the exact same thing. If you need this to be testable, I recommend you inject the time provider and you do this in the constructor so you can mock it and measure it. But we can also do this and this will be fine for the purposes of this video. And then I'm going to say private read only histogram of the type double. I'm just going to say histogram and inject it. And then in the dispose method, I'm going to say var elapsed equals time provider dot system dot get elapsed time from that request start time over there and then histogram dot record the elapsed time in total milliseconds in this case and that is it this means i can create a method here which is public tracked request duration measure request duration over here and then all i need to do is say return new tracked request duration and pass down the histogram. In this case, it is just the duration. And that's that. I can now take that, go to the program.cs and find the request. I have this injected and I can say using var discard this and then weather metrics measure request duration. And because the scope is the whole request, I don't actually need to do anything. All I do is this. And now if I stop this application and I restart it, I'm going to go back to the UI, go to the weather, call this a few times. And as you're going to see in the metrics, we have both our requests, both the count and the duration, which by the way, I can now have in a single method. I don't need to call it twice because the duration will also measure the request. If I need to, I can consolidate the two, but I have them separately. And now you can see in duration, if I click that, you're going to see how long the different percentiles took. And I can go back and keep spamming it. And you're going to see that this is increasing in real time. So this was all the way up to 100 or 50. And now it's 175. And it sort of depends in milliseconds. But all the context is taken into account. And as you can see, we can visualize it and measure everything. So we have our counter with the count. We have the histogram with duration. Things like open connections is an example of an up down counter, which increases and decreases as time goes by. And then you have observable counterparts, which you can now use in your .NET applications and push wherever you need to, ideally using OpenTelemetry because that is the most well-supported standard nowadays. And you can visualize them in any way you want. In this case, I use Aspire. But if you want me to visualize them in any different way from Grafana to whatever, really, leave a comment down below and let me know I'm going to make a video on that. But now I want to know from you, are you using this new type of tooling in .NET 8? And if do, how are you using it? Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.